All right, 10.2 is talking about vectors in space. We've already done all of this stuff with vectors in a two-dimensional arena. Now we're going to do it in a three-dimensional. Okay, so here is our vector. Remember when we had two pieces of our vector? Hold on. We had our component form. It was like 7, 4, right? Well, now we have three pieces in our vector. You guys see that? Um, it can be written in standard notation like this. Before it was with an I and a J. Now it's with an I, J, and a K. Whatever number is in front of the letter is what the number represents. So if you had like I plus 3J minus 4K, this vector would be what number is in front of I? One. one. So it'd be 1, comma, 3, comma, negative 4, right? That makes sense? All right, so when we talk about finding the component form, just like we did before, you had a terminal point and you had an initial point. Initial is where the vector does what? What does initial mean? Where it starts, good. And terminal is where it does what? Ends, God bless you. So for the component form, it's terminal minus initial, just like it was before. Initial. Terminal minus initial. End minus the beginning. <clears throat> All right, so two vectors are equal, just like it was before. If their magnitude, magnitude is just the way of saying length, is the same, like the distance. So look, all you're going to do is take each piece of the vector, square it, add it together. It, to find the direction instead of the slope, this is what you do, which we'll talk about a little more tomorrow. When we're adding, just like we did before, first with first, second with second, third with third, right? When you're multiplying, if there's a number on the outside, you just distribute all the way through. And then if it's the dot product, it's first times first plus second times second plus third times third. All right, all stuff we've done before. So let's just do three little examples. There's a web assigned. You can do half of it today. We'll finish this up tomorrow, and then you guys will be done, done, I promise. All right, so in this case, it says find the component form and the magnitude of vector V. Having the initial point, so remember this, to find the component form, it's terminal minus initial. So my terminal point is... 3, 6, 4, minus my initial point is 3, 4, 2. Everybody with me? Notice it's in parentheses because it's a point. When we have our vector, then we use our little, our little V thing. So it's first with first. So 3 minus 3 is what? Zero. Zero. Perfect. 6 minus 4 is what? 2, and then 4 minus 2 is 2. There is your component form. God bless you. So now if you're going to find the magnitude, magnitude, remember, is just that double V. Well, you're going to take each piece of your vector and square it, add it together. It goes underneath the square root. So this would be 0 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. So when we simplify this, what's 0 squared? 0 plus 2 squared is 4 plus 2 squared is 4. So this is going to give you what? Square root of 8, which do we leave it like that? No, no we would break it down into 2 root 2, right? This is 4 times 2, so 2 root 2. Anybody have any questions? Exactly the same thing that you guys have seen a million times. If you had, let's just say we had this vector... Say they wanted you to do 3V. What does that mean? What are you going to do with 3? You're going to distribute it, right? So go in here. So your vector would become 0, 6, 6. Right? Scalar multiplication. All right. Dot product. Here are my two vectors that we're talking about. I have 4, 0, and 1. Remember, the dot product does not mean multiply. It's negative 1, 3, and 2. Your dot product is going to be one singular value. One singular value. So you're going to take first times first. So 4 times negative 1. 4 times negative 1 plus 
second times second, so zero times three, plus third times third, so one times two. So when you simplify this, guys, what's four times negative one? Negative four. Plus, what's zero times three? Zero. Plus, what's one times two? Two. Now, negative four plus zero plus two is? Negative two. Perfect. Questions? This is coming back a little bit. All right, last thing. You will absolutely need a calculator for this, but we're going to find the angle between two vectors. This is the formula for this. This does not find the angle. This finds the cosine of the angle. What is the U and the V on the top? What is this? Anybody remember what that value is? This is the dot product. You find the dot product, if I could spell. It's an issue today. And then on the bottom, what are these two things? Those are the magnitudes. These are the magnitudes. So we're going to find the dot product in the numerator and the magnitudes in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do this. <clears throat> if I'm going to find, this is the cosine of angle theta. So the dot product, it's going to be first times first. So one times three plus second times second, zero times one plus third times third. So two times zero. Does anybody have any questions about how I got that? All right, now we're going to find the magnitude of each of them on the bottom. So I'm going to do two separate square roots. You're just going to square and add everything <clears throat> in each vector. So I have 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared right here. And my second one, I have 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared. And now let's just simplify. Let's simplify the numerator. So this is cosine of theta out here. So I have 3 plus 0 plus 0 is what? 3, okay. And then in my denominator, 1 squared is 1 plus 0 plus 4. So it's the square root of what? 5, good. And then over here, I have 9 plus 1 plus 0. So square root of what? 10. Now, guys, from this point, you can just do this in your calculator if you want. If you want to multiply and say this is the cosine theta of 3 over the square root of 50, is that the same thing? Can you multiply two things underneath the square root? Absolutely. <clears throat> but in your calculator, what is 3 divided by the square root of 50? Tell me to five decimal places what you get. 3 divided by the square root of 50. Okay. Now, is that the measure of the angle? Yes or no? Is that theta or is that the cosine of theta? That's the cosine of theta. So in your calculator, you need to hit cosine negative one, second cosine, and then put in 0.42426. You could also hit second cosine, second answer. And it'll tell you what your angle measure is. What is the measure of this angle? Um, give me one decimal place. It's 64.9. 64.9 degrees. All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Go ahead. I'll finish up. If you guys want to look back at the vectors that we did in previous chapters, it would be lessons 6.3 and 6.4. We'll finish this tomorrow.